I'm not a woodworker, but some of my friends that are tell me that you have specialized tools that you may not use very frequently, but when you need them, they're the only tool that will do the job. And that's the case with something called min content, max content, and fit content. Now to show you how this works, let me go ahead and add an H1 tag here. And let's say something like uh, our great uh, heading or something, okay? So there we go, we've got that in there. Now what I wanna do is actually style this. So let's just do some style tags and we'll grab the H1. We'll do a few things. First of all, set the font size here. Let's do something ridiculous like, sure, six rem, that'll work. And then next, what I wanna do is talk about when you would use max, min, and fit content. Now, generally speaking, with any block element, the width is set to auto by default. To make sure you can see this, let me set up a border. We'll do two pixels solid uh, red. All right, so there you go. You can see we've got this border and it's showing that this is trying to take up the full width. Now in this case, I've actually got another style tag down here. I think I've got, yeah, padding right here, two rem on the body. But you can see that it's trying to take up the full width that it can. And that's the default for all block, line, uh, block level elements. So paragraphs and divs and headings and stuff like that. So you can see how it's taking up the full width that it's allowed. Now, it's also taking the full height, but only the full height that it needs. In other words, it's not taking up the entire height of the viewport or anything like that. Like I could come in here and say height uh, 100% and it would look the exact same. Technically though, this is set to what height auto. If you're interested in the difference between auto and 100%, let me know. But in other words, it's not just gonna take up the full height of the viewport like this, all right? By default, block level and inline elements only take up the height that they need. But width is not like that. With block elements, they take up the full width. Now, that's fine and good for most of the time, but sometimes you actually want to control that. What if I only want this to take up the exact width it needs and no more? Well, that's where something called max, min, and fit content come into play. Let's start with uh, min content to start with. What min con content's going to do is look at the intrinsic sizing of this element and limit everything to that width. So you can see that this is the longest word, so that's as small as this heading can get. But notice that now it's acting almost like an inline block element, except it's actually wrapping inside of here. And just to make sure uh, this is a little bit more how I'd actually write this, let's do something like line height 1.1. Okay, so you can see the use case here is now you can actually have content over this way because you're setting the min content based on the intrinsic size of this H1. Now I could also switch it up and go the opposite direction with a max content. And notice the same exact thing happens. It only takes up the width it needs, except there is no wrapping involved. Now, just to note that this is not just for text. This is for any elements at all, all right? Especially block level elements. This will control how they work. Now, we'll talk a second how this works with like child elements in a little bit. But you can see here that this is going to take up the full width. The danger though, is that it actually always takes up the full width and it never wraps, which means you get scrolling right here because it's going to break past the viewport. So you should only want to use max content if it's something smaller than whatever your mobile screen would be. But that way you know that it's going to cap it to the exact width it needs and no more than that. All right, next, uh, the magic one, the superpower one is fit content. And this one kind of has two different use cases. If the screen is bigger than whatever your block level element is, it will cap it just like max content. However, if it gets smaller, it'll wrap it and basically make it an auto width element. So now it's gonna take up the full width, but it'll actually wrap within it. So super helpful to understand how these little kind of specialized tools work. And uh, I'll talk now about children elements and then also when I might use this in a real case scenario. So let's talk first of all about children elements. So if I came in here and changed this, this, and this to a div, and that way they all have the same thing. And then maybe here we'd change this back to an H1, add that in here. And in here we'd say something like paragraph, lorem, uh, lorem 25, something like that. Okay, so we've got all this stuff in here very large, uh, let's go for rim here. Okay, so you can see that what we've got is two different things. If I were to come in here and change this to something like min content, you can see that it's going to cap it at whatever's the smallest between all of these. In this case, that would be this heading itself. It's gonna shrink everything. But notice that this is not the smallest it can be. So it's not like it takes all the children and makes them all min content. It simply looks at all the children and takes them and says which one of these could be the smallest and that's what everything gets capped to. All right, same thing for max content. So max content like this, you can see if I were to scroll, it doesn't stop here. It actually looks at whichever one could be the longest and it's all the way way out here. So not super helpful in this case, but uh, yeah, I could come here to fit content, not fix, but fit content. And now it's essentially always gonna act like a width auto because this is always gonna be way bigger. So it's gonna always wrap and 
basically stop me there. But you can see if I were to maybe cut this back quite a bit, eventually it's going to have a width auto here. And if I were to get big enough, it will now snap to it and basically only take the width it needs based on the largest element, in this case, the largest child element. And that would be this heading, this H1 right here. So that's kind of how it works with children elements. Now let's talk a little bit about more realistic scenarios. So let me come in here and I'm just gonna paste in uh, some more content. You can see I've got different cards showing up here with different titles. One of them's got an image, a few of them have buttons. I guess all of them have buttons. So let's actually use this in a real case scenario. Now let's talk first about min content. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, at least I meant to, that sometimes I'll use this for columns in grid. So these are all inside of a card container. You can see that here. So I've got a grid auto flow column. So they're laying next to each other and then a gap between them. Now, what if I want this first one here, this first card to always be as small as possible so that this, so that this column is as small as possible and these kind of share the rest of the space. Well, the way I could do that is come in here and say card, maybe just grab the first uh, of type. And then in here I could say width would be min content. Now what it's gonna do is basically shrink this one as small as it can be based on whatever the elements are inside of here. In this case, it's this heading that's basically capping it. It can't get any smaller than this heading because of the word something. If I did come up here though, and I changed this just to the word cool, you can see how it gets even smaller and how it's capped by this word right here. So really helpful to be able to basically dynamically adjust the width of different columns based on the content inside of them. Now next, if I go ahead and cut down this card content right here, you can see I've got this extra button right here that's taking up the full width because that's what block elements do by default. They take up that full width. Now, what if I wanted to adjust this and make it a little bit different? So let's uh, change this to something like uh, auto button. And if I only want it to take up the space that it needs, so use its intrinsic size to set the width, I could set the auto button to width of max content, just like that. And now you can see it takes up just the space it needs and no more. Now remember that will actually cause overflow, but in a use case like this, I know it'll never be larger than the words extra button, so it should never break the screen width and go larger than that. So super helpful to be able to use max content to basically set that max size and make sure it never wraps. I never want that word to wrap at all. Now the last use case, this fit content, is the one I use the most probably. If I were to come into this uh, card container and say something like align uh, items uh, start, they should all jump up to the start but these buttons are still kind of huge. Well, they're all inside these cards, so I could come to the parent, and I could say something like justify uh, items, and I could say start. And that's fine and good, but it doesn't actually affect all my buttons. In this case, this auto button one isn't affected. Well, let me come back up here and change this back to button just so they all share the same class. And now, instead of controlling basically the width of that button with the parent, uh, because I don't know if this will be inside of a parent that has justify item start, and I want the button class to be way more flexible. What I can do instead is come down here and just grab my button, and I can say the width needs to be set to fit content. And because sometimes I might have larger text because this is a button class that might stretch one way or the other. Now, whatever it's in, whether it's in a grid container like this, or whether it's just in the body itself, like you can see here, or whether it's inside of another div like this extra button right here, either way, it'll all only ever take up the space that it needs. And if it ever needed to wrap, it could wrap. Now, in this case, they're all small words, but you can, you know, sometimes with buttons, you can add several words inside of that and you may need it to wrap. And now you've got that set up and ready to go. So that's how to use min, max, and fit content, and also some different use cases for how you might use it in real life. Well, I hope this exploration of some more customized tools in CSS was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.